Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Hi, right, welcome to the video. Um, I'm going to be working on this for a little bit this morning. Well, pr probably for like 90 minutes, but I don't know if I'm going to record all of that. So, just hang tight for one second. I'm prepping. <laughs> I did I did work last night on it for a little bit, so you'll notice it's a little further along than it was um, yesterday. But uh, I, I did record it. It's processing right now, so eventually it'll, it'll go up. This probably will hit... Um, regular YouTube before uh, that one will but uh, yeah so let's get going on this I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start working up here I want to get this hand and her um, body up here kind of done how am I doing on the camera okay cool yeah, it was interesting last night shooting because the light is very different at, at nighttime in here so I can get daylight to sort of help the videos along when I'm um, shooting in the morning so that helps quite a bit and I had a lot of feedback on the ballpoint pens so what I'm gonna probably try to do is find a pen that's can get some similar sort of texture and lines to a ballpoint pen but probably avoid the ballpoint pen ink so I'm sure there's something that I could find that would be similar similar enough and really it's more about the effect I could sit and draw with a ballpoint pen see what it looks like um, and then just uh, try to mimic something similar for um, uh, you know like with other another tool it's kind of what I did with um, even rapidographs when I first started I, uh, I I don't know if cocky would be the right word but, like, I remember um, hearing that, oh, like, professional artists use brushes to ink or whatever it was. And I was like, man, I'm like, I could do whatever I wanted with a tech pen. Because I, I had drawn with tech pens a bit as a teenager. And I kind of knew what I was sort of capable with them. With, uh, with them. And uh, so it was like... I, I did learn how to do even things like splatter with a regular pen. Like I would just draw a splatter um, and make little splashy marks and all kinds of things. And it was very time consuming, but yeah, it was kind of funny. I've got a training card somewhere that I inked over Tom, Tom Coker. If anyone knows that, that artist. And um, it was funny because I mean, I did splatter in the background all by hand, meaning like drew it all. You would never ever be able to tell. It looks like I did like the straw effect where you can take ink and you get it down and you blow on it with a straw and it creates these weird like spidery sort of extensions off of it. And I just drew it all by hand. It's kind of nuts, but like I said, there's a there's this stubborn quality that I have. It's my charm. <laughs> The worst thing you can ever do is tell me that something's not possible or or not believe in me. Oh, forget about it. So any detractors, just know that all you're doing is you're just putting more fuel in my tank. You're better off just not saying anything. <laughs> it's like, you can't do that. It's like, hold my beer. <laughs> I did a video um, this morning for Patreon, and we actually looked at about three issues of David Finch, Moon Knight, believe it or not. I wanted to check some of that stuff out. And so I was, I, it's kind of like I couldn't start working because I had a few things going on that were going to tie down my desk and stuff like that. And so um, I shot that video, but it was, it was interesting. His storytelling was really good on those um early issues. It was very, very cool. So I need to look at the pencils really quick and see what I'm doing here. I've got my drawing of the pencils here. So it's just, it's so much darker. It's a little easier to see. I'm going to try to break up these lines on the hand a little bit so that it looks a little more, um, like not clear and um more like it's in motion 
the more you sort of really like literally outline stuff, the kind of the, um, the slower it tends to move towards the, for the eye. Like when your eye sees it, it's got a little less sort of energy to it. So if you break up your lines, it tends to make it just look a little more dynamic. I have to watch this too. This thing is out of perspective a little bit. The, um, I don't know, whatever you call the part where you grip the gun or you put your finger in that hole, the gun hole where the trigger is. <laughs> you guys got me excited though. I have to say yesterday after I was done shooting the videos, and um, I started kind of thinking about what's going on. And I was like, this is it, Rich. You realize this is like freedom. <laughs> freedom! <laughs> like, can it really be this close? I think it is. That's pretty wild. I've been a slave to the grind for far too long. And now my YouTube family and friends from Instagram are going to liberate me. <laughs> <laughs> and Patreon peeps, of course. <laughs> All right, so the ass is looking good. My yeah, I just want to make sure I'm in frame. Yeah, okay. So what else is going on? I watched the movie 1917 recently. And, uh, it was, it was good. I don't, I, there'll be no spoilers, but it's, it looks great. It really does look nice. The story is pretty good. It's probably based on like a true story, but I, I think the, um, the way it was handled in the movie felt a little, there was times where it was a little far-fetched, but, but overall I, I liked it. I would definitely recommend it. It looks great, and man, the, the costumes and the scale of parts of it are very, very, very cool looking. It's about um, two soldiers in World War One. that are sent on a mission to basically go to the front lines, and uh, their, their sort of story, so it's cool. I'm gonna ink a little bit of her spinal bone. I'm hopping around a little bit. It's 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 still early in the morning and I haven't really inked yet today. So like I said, sometimes I'll do what I call like the confidence building inking <laughs> or drawing. I'm really kind of drawing this with ink. I mean, there's there's definitely enough pencils down to just call it inking, but I'm still drawing a lot with the ink. For people that don't know, this is my pencils too. I know it can get confusing sometimes, but yeah, anything Blaster Kid related will be 100% me. But, um, yeah, there were some good suggestions on, on um, speeding up. To, not speeding up, but, but um, you know, maybe working from, like, looser pencils and stuff like that. I've definitely considered it. Sometimes I don't feel like I have the confidence to completely... Like, what would happen is I would, I would get impatient... And then I might make a boneheaded mistake that could have been avoided if I just spent the time, you know, just even a couple of minutes penciling it just a little bit tighter from the beginning. Because um, I think what, what happens um, for for me, and, and it's like, I'll stop paying attention a little bit, and I just see lines, and I'm like, okay, like, that line probably was supposed to be there. And it's like, you have to really, like, make sure that the lines that you are inking are make sense. Her body is like here. Okay, I'm gonna have the light come from the top. So I'm gonna open this line up and have the bottom connect. Am I still in frame? Yeah. I'm trying to like 
<laughs> get comfortable. It's kind of like I'm a, a little crammed in to, to ink and uh, film. It's funny too, because like on my YouTube channel, like I, I watched the videos back yesterday just to sort of see how they looked and like what the conversation was. Cause sometimes if I'm, if I'm just working, you know, like I don't really even remember what I was saying. Um, not like that, but, but I mean, you know what I mean? You're like, like, how did it come off? Um, but, uh, it was really interesting. The videos that YouTube was sending me to after my video would end, it was like two different live streams. I can't remember what the one was called. It was, I think, two Australian guys talking about comics and stuff like that. And then the other one was Gem Mint Collectibles, which I always get sent to his page. And he was interviewing some guy about displays or something. <laughs> but, like, I won't be paying attention. All of a sudden, I'm like, what am I watching? Okay, so... Yeah, the one thing that you have to be careful with if you're going to use any kind of templates on your um, circles and stuff like that is just don't put flat circles. You have to manipulate that stuff to make sure that it's going to pick up the little nuances of the um, position that your stuff is at. I'm going to start filling in some of these blacks. I don't think... Did I put anything else near those things? I could put a button or two in here. That'll look good. This is a trick that I learned from my black drawings is you can add little indications of detail with certain little shapes, make it look like lights hitting stuff. And it's really effective for making stuff look kind of complex. Um, so I, I don't overuse it, but a little bit of it actually does make stuff look pretty cool. So let's see, I'm going to go and film this. These are like cast shadows on the pipes or the whatever the sort of cords she's got on her because um, they're overlapping. So when stuff goes underneath something, I'll put little shadows. Let's So right now we're about less than two hours into this piece. By the end of this video, it'll be about two hours worth of inking. <clears throat> and like I was mentioning in the other video, I think it took me somewhere between five and like six hours to draw it. Something like that. What, and honestly, the, the drawing was pretty smooth, but there was just, there was three or four little parts that I was getting stuck on and I got real picky with it and um, it was bugging me. And so I, I literally just had to, um, give me one sec. I just want to make sure that I do this good. Um, I, uh, I just broke them down into very, very simple shapes. I mean, I like literally for the foot, I drew like a box and then I started carving it away. Then I put the sole of the boot on it as another sort of box that stuck out more than the other box. And then I divided it and really went kind of methodically through it just to make sure that, um, it was sitting kind of on the right um, thing, you know, I don't think that I would have to do that every single time that I draw the boots or, or things like that. But if you can't work it out and you know, you keep drawing stuff and it's looking a little crooked or a little weird, um, it's worth doing it. There was, um, her head I mentioned in the other video was giving me some issues. So it was like, I originally was going to have it almost all in silhouette and I, started thinking about it. I was like, I think it'll just be too much black, like too dark up there. It won't really make any sense. 
and um, then it was like, oh, well, how much should I draw? What's going to look good and not look overexposed? Because I already knew that her her head was partially behind the gun so that you don't get like a full face reveal. Not that it's that big of a deal, but you know what I mean? I'm trying to like, you know, think of these as like little movie posters or something, you know, it's like, it's coming, it's coming. You're not going to see it all yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was interesting because her head was at such a weird angle that the eye was hard to get. And so I had the ear where I thought I wanted it. And I was trying to build the head around the ear placement and then the forehead and it wasn't working. And so, um, I ultimately got the eye to look right. And then the ear was off and the forehead was off and the bridge of the nose was off. So I just kept kind of like just trying it. I was like, all right, don't flip out. Take your time. Do it right. We can do it, baby. <laughs> okay. It was interesting, too, looking at the, the Finch Moon Knight stuff. There was a couple of things that he drew that were things um, that, that, that there was a guy that had, a like, a bandolier, and he had bullets over him, and uh, there was a boot that he had that was kind of up, and I was like, oh, cool, like, see? That's what I had mentioned, that, like, you know, it's always, it's so valuable to um, work on your own drawings, and then when you end up looking at someone... Who does it right? I'm putting a little bit of rendering on these pipes. I think it will actually look cool. A little extra value. Like they're coming out of the shadow. So they have like a, a little bit of a hatch on them. But yeah. That's the great thing about when you actually start to work on your own drawings. Is the second you, um, you know, are able to look at someone else's work and you go, Oh, I had to draw something like that. How did they do it? You have a point of reference, you know, you can go, Oh, I did the boot kind of like this. And I see what he did here. That's interesting. And you know, you may not, um, agree with it, but it's still, it'll give you a contrasting, um, idea, which is cool. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too much out of the frame. Oh my gosh. I wish I had a magic wand and I could like wave it and have this be um, <laughs> nearly done. I'm kind of excited. Let's do some bullets. Let's wait for that to dry. We'll do, we'll do these things. They always look really cool. I got real lucky and I did like some pretty cool like light effects on one of the early versions that I did that I thought just looked kind of neat. And so I've I've really kind of mimicked it since then. It was there was two there was a piece that I did that wasn't even Blaster Kid a long time ago that was this I called it It's Over Taurus. It was this like crazy guy with like a gas mask and bull horns on his head. <laughs> Who knows? I might throw him at he could be a good bad guy uh for something. But um he had reflective light on his visor or like his shades that was kind of cool. So between that, I had a couple of lighting cues that I did kind of accidentally that, that looked good. So it was one of those things where it's like, Oh, okay, well more of that. <laughs> it's like when you have something that looks good, keep it. Okay. So now I need to, Put these little highlights. Okay, and then oh, I'm gonna check. I think the video is that's yeah, okay. The video that I'm processing is done. I'm gonna start uploading it to YouTube. Just give me one sec. You can sit and look at this for a minute. <laughs> okay, let's go to YouTube. Upload a video, and you'll get this video that I'm uploading too. So it's for your benefit to be patient for a second. What? What was that? Something just fell. Um. Oh, 
here it is. Okay. Oh, my template phone. Okay, cool. So that video is uploading. This video will take a long time to upload. How long is it? Yeah, 32 minutes. The ones that I shoot with my camera, like what I'm doing right now for this, they take a long time to process for YouTube. It's kind of, it's it's not a huge deal, but like a 35, 40 minute video sometimes can take over an hour to like actually end up being on YouTube. So I'm not templating all these ellipses. I just need to get uh, like part of one of them and then I can work around it there. That'll be good. Do you see I did like um just like half moons and then I'll freehand the rest and that'll um give it a quality that I want. It's funny because I'm almost tempted to grab my super duper thin Rapido graphs because I've got a four zero and a um six zero and they're real tiny, but I'm gonna try to avoid it if I can help it. I might have to on her face, like her eye and stuff like that is so tiny, and the pupil and stuff like that, or the um, whatever you call the black part of your eye, iris. No, that's the pupil. But yeah, that is real small, so that I might have to use the six zero. Which is fine. I mean, I don't mind, but it's they're, they're very finicky little tools. They're very, very delicate. So you have to be one incredibly careful with them. You have to keep them super clean. I would highly recommend if you're going to fill them with ink, use Ultra Draw. Don't use Universal. And uh, yeah, don't let the ink set in them after you're done using them, or you will come back to a twenty-five dollar pen that is dead and won't be revive revivable. This is so fun working on this. Um, yeah, I need one more. Oh, okay, there's another highlight right here I can see. It's so tiny. Oh my gosh. It was barely noticeable. Yeah, the goal with these things is they're almost like um, like a chambered uh, like chambered disc that kind of sit here that you could attach her to, like fuel or something you could fill up with or plutonium. <laughs> Did I mention she's a bomb? <laughs> It was funny. I was joking with a friend of mine a while back about um, <laughs> like the world's worst like uh, slogans, you know, for like the book. Like uh, I don't know, like you know those those really bad. Like it's like in a world where there's no justice, justice will be served. <laughs> but we were just trying to come up with like super crappy ones for Buster Kid. Somewhere I have them. They're actually kind of funny. I should release them. Like, that I have people can they can laugh. This goes to black. Oh man, this is gonna look so cool. I can already tell. But yeah, you see how those uh start to come into play. Those those are the, one of the hardest things on her costume to draw because they sit right on her um, right on her uh, what the fuck you call those S scapulas <laughs> so they move you know what I mean like they're part of the body that's actually at a point where it can move in and out and up and down and stuff like that. And so the shape of the ellipse or circle, if you want to call it that, if you're looking at it straight on, uh, can really change depending on the position of the arms and the back.
I did start learning the proper names of anatomy. I'm slowly like picking them up so that I I don't call things the wrong name. It's still a work in progress. <laughs> It is crazy, like, though, how many times I've learned the names of anatomy. I mean, it's not like dozens by any means, but you know what I mean? It's at least six or seven times I've gone like, okay, I need to really, like, I need to know the names. I just, if I don't, if I don't use it or stick to calling them those names, I just totally forget them. Okay, this was a little bit of a highlight right here, or like rim light. And then again, remember with the, oh, I mentioned this in the video last night. Because I did these blacks with brush ink and filled it in with the brush, I outlined it with my pen. Um, for the larger areas of black, I'm going to do the same thing because I want the ink to look consistent on the character. And what happens is sometimes if you fill in, um, like if I filled in this whole area with like a pen, it can have a different texture and it can have a different look. And it just can kind of make the original sometimes look a little spotty. So what I try to do is is keep whatever I fill in the larger areas of black consistent. And then the other thing that I recommended in the other video is don't go over it again and again and again. You, you can at first if that's what you're going to do. But after that, if you keep going over the areas, you're going to get shinier and shinier ink a lot of times. And it can look real weird. And it can um, just for it won't look weird scanned. But your original will have like this weird like gloss to it because the ink has been built up. And also the longer that your ink sort of sits out, if you do it like I do, um, I can show you what I have my ink in. I put my ink in one of these things. So it's, this is like um, a salt dispenser that you would put on like a dining room table. Um, it's crystal. It's actually like, um, but I fill it full of ink and I just leave it out all the time. So, and then this I can fill in with black too. How long am I in this video? 27 minutes? All right. We'll try to go to 38 again and see if that will work. Because um, I was surprised that the video was shot that long yesterday because my camera has this tendency to at 31 to 33 minutes say that the video is too long. And so it creates a second file for it, um, which isn't a huge deal other than the fact that then now the video has to process and then be uploaded. And that then eats up a ton of time, which sucks. So you can see she's got a lot of black on her. I mean, the, the goal was to have her come out of the shadows again. That was sort of like the whole concept behind um, a lot of these preview images was that she was always sort of like coming out of the black. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and, and this is another thing that I noticed is when I filled in the area of black here that it needed a cast shadow um, from this canister kind of cutting across her butt. But I'm going to do it later, but I have two options because she's clearly got light coming from this way into it. There's also light coming this way. I'm thinking about pulling the shadow over here. I put it in pencil. It kind of starts here and goes over the butt cheek. But in theory, I could have it sort of fall this way too. But I think this will look better compositionally. So I call that fictional lighting, where you just sort of you sort of bend light to your will, just because it makes more sense with your drawing. So because ultimately, that's what you know what I mean. Like have as enough uh, as much real things as you can, real lighting or whatever. But um, at some point, it is just a cartoon cartoon drawing or a comic book drawing so you want it to look cool and have a that feel too more little canisters These are black right here. Okay, and then this comes over here. This is her hip. Up into this part of her body. 
And I guess we can work here. This doesn't look done. That's funny. It's like sort of an indication of a pouch, but I didn't finish it. So I'll kind of make it look a little more sort of functional right now. Put a few creases in it. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I I uh I feel like um the nineties are back. It sounds funny, but like the style of comic art that people seem to really be responding to is what I love, which is that real detailed, um, just pedal to the metal action and, and big cool shots of your characters and stuff like that. It's pretty exciting. You know, of course we all want well-written comics too, you know, hopefully your stories are good. But it's fun to see the art taking the lead again, in a way. If you've watched my videos long enough, I joke and I say that like I was tricked. <laughs> it's like I got into comics to do like big double page spreads of like guys fighting and stuff blowing up and heroes everywhere and tech tunnels and... You know, not not the super cheesy stuff, but like when it's well done, it can actually look really, really cool. And uh, yeah, it was like all of a sudden no one was doing that anymore. All the writers were like, no, I want to write like more serious books or, um, you know, uh, it's like, well, what about a superhero comic where the characters aren't in costume? And you're like, oh, can that just be one page of the book? <laughs> They're just not wearing their costume as they go grab it. <laughs> but yeah, kind of over it. I've been over it. So it's like, I wanted to come up with uh, something that would, would, you know, be a good story, but then also could have all the sort of visual coolness. It, you know, I had mentioned the, um, the Travis, uh, dark ages, uh, project that he had started being, you know, kind of like one of those, um, loose ends that for me as a fan, it was just the curiosity of what the book could have looked like. But Nick Manabat really was that guy too, where if you ever saw the original cybernary, that was the flip book of death blow, you just had this young new artist that was, had like a ton of potential. And, uh, you know, sadly he got sick with cancer and died at like 24 years old. But, um, uh, Oh, that's a wire. I was like, what is that? Um, but sort of the same thing with him where it's like, you just go like, wow, what like would have happened if that guy would have kept drawing C cybernary, you know, like how good would he have got? So those kind of loose ends to me are, are things that I hope that I can explore in, in some weird way, almost like as a tribute or a, to, to artists like that, you know, where it's like, I want to make sure people always remember Nick and I want to make sure that people understand how important Travis was to comics. Cause he was, he, he made people draw better. He created a look that was very, um, you know, unique to his work once, once he figured out how to do it and uh, made a big impact. And I, I think like Nick, Nick was heading that route too. Like that. Let's see if that works. I had an idea to leave a little bit of light hitting that one. Yeah, that could work. Oh, pipes and pipes and cords and cords. Um, what is going on here? I want this black. Okay. And I gotta detail these cords.
yeah, all things considered, I think this full piece will take about 12 hours. So six to pencil it, six to ink it, which is not too bad. Pinups and covers always take about that long and, and can even take a little bit longer, but that seems to be the norm. I find it very, very rare that I can get through a cover in one day. They always seem to spill over just a little bit to a second day. And like a double page spread, it kind of takes like three days. Uh, well, now, now penciling and inking it, I, I can't guarantee I could do one in three days, but um, three days to do one of the jobs. Okay, so we're going to end this video here and hopefully um, hopefully it shot well and it um, worked out good for everyone. Oh, okay, that, I was like, there's something weird going on. I hadn't finished that wire, so it never had a, a beginning and an ending. Okay, cool. All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit with more of this. Okay, bye.